Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Patrick Carr, Dimitri's co-host for The Roof Report. It's 2024, and we have a full episode of industry updates coming your way. But remember, if you like these reports, take a second right now, go right below this video, and hit that like button so we will keep on making these videos for you. Badger's Corner. First up this week is Badger's Corner. Our friend Tim Brown hosted a debate with Steve Badger and Matthew Moholland. Matthew is a former roofer and public adjuster, and you guys already know Steve, an insurance industry lawyer. One of the spiciest questions was about concurrent damage. Here's what Steve had to say. And let me give the example that I like to give that I think is the easiest one for people to understand. Uh, if you've got an old crappy roof uh, and the whole old crappy roof is demolished by hail, the insurance company owes it. They can't say it was an old crappy roof. You insured it. Uh, it's an old crappy roof. The whole thing was damaged by hail. That is the cause of the damage. It's covered. You pay. But you got an old crappy roof and you maybe had maybe six or eight hail strikes on it and that's it. And uh, those six or eight hardy slate tiles, let's say, uh, are damaged and need to be repaired. Uh, so if that was a good roof, you could take those tiles out, put in new ones, and you're done, all right? And uh, it would work. But because it's an old, tired, hardy slate roof, you try to repair, you walk around, and it all just crumbles under your feet, and the whole roof then has to be replaced because of a repairability issue. Uh, under the concurrent Matt. causation ish doctrine, uh, all I owe are the six or eight shingles or slate tiles that were damaged I don't owe everything else. All right, Steve makes it sound so easy, doesn't he? But they went back and forth on this one for a while. Let's take a listen to Matthew's take on this. If, with repairability issues, we still have to repair the damaged tiles and the repairability of that does come into play for those. If we ignore the wear and tear and there's still a repairability issue. If, I mean, if anybody has ever dealt with hardy plank or cementitious tiles in general, it it is brittle even from day one. It's hard to take those off and a lot of times you end up having to take a lot of them off and there's a lot of damage. But if there is unavoidable damage that's caused during the repair of a damaged tile, that unavoidable damage is part of the direct physical loss. And that is covered by the policies, is it not? That I don't argue with. Okay, If there is unavoidable okay. damage, if it was a good tile and you'd have to break a couple to get the other ones done, of course, we have to do what it takes. But if they all crumble around you when you walk along the roof and everything, uh, uh, just because they're old and tired, that's a wear and tear issue. That's the famous All Saints case from Texas. Uh, that is one of the first concurrent causation cases. I'm happy to send it to anyone. That is exactly the scenario in, uh, that I laid out. And the court held in that case that the insurance right. company only owes the six or eight tiles. But you're talking about yeah. walking on it and damaging it and creating wear and tear damage or footfall damage. That's the damage that wouldn't be covered because it's separatable from the the loss, even in the All States case, it's, it, if it can't be separated, then it would be covered. So damage that is caused during the repairs, it's unavoidable. That would be covered. I don't want to obscure the language just because they are walking on it. Maybe they need to do it from a cherry picker or something. But if they're unable to repair the damaged tiles without causing further damage, the so further damage would be covered. Use a cherry picker, I guess. So you're not making footfall damage that wouldn't be covered because that's not part of it. Yeah, and I'm just going to disagree with you because uh, that's not what the All Saints case says. Incredible back and forth there. You know, as once told, there is actually two conditions to a roof, insurable and not insurable. But we saw right here, it can get a little bit more complicated. Public adjusters, we're talking to you. We want to hear from you below. Comment on what you've heard here from Steve and from Matthew. Who's right in this one? We have more stories coming up, but first, let's give a shout out to the sponsor of this week's episode. Head over to The Roof Store, everyone, for great deals on bulk materials. You can get the official roofing insights underlayment for only $49 a roll. It's developed by our guide, Dimitri, to last for up to 25 years, and it comes with a 15-year limited warranty. The Roof Store is also carrying amazing deals right now on nails, ice and water shield, and more. Coil nails start at only $28. Ice and water shield starts at $150. You get free shipping on any bulk orders. Prices around the industry keep going up, but the roof store is here to save you money. Go to theroof.store to make an order today. That was dumb. Now it's time for the dumb stuff. 
It's winter, and that means some people have snow on the roof. Every year, there are videos of people trying to get rid of it. It is hard to say if there was any damage caused by this action right here, but I think it goes without saying, do not try that at home, everybody. Manufacturers and materials. Let's move on to materials. This next story could be the future of roofing. Two guys at UC Santa Barbara designed a tile that changes color depending on the temperature. It uses what's called a wax motor, but there is no electricity involved. When the wax heats up, the tile turns white. When the wax cools down, the tile flips back to black. Here's a video to show you how it works. The white keeps AC costs down in the summer and the black keeps heating costs down in the winter. In testing, these tiles use three times less energy than traditional materials. They're still in development, so you won't see them on a roof anytime soon. We wanna know below in the comments, is this a waste of time for manufacturers to get behind? or is this the future of roofing? I'm talking to my contractors, PAs, and even our attorneys. Let us know your thoughts. Now we're moving on to the speed round. This is the latest updates from some big industry players. Tamco became the official roofing partner of the Kansas City Chiefs. If you've watched any games in the last two weeks, you already saw their name on the stadium. It's a great move for Tamco, especially if good old Taylor Swift keeps on showing up to the games. Beacon opened up five more branches to close out 2023. In total, they opened up 26 new branches last year. We'll be watching to see if they keep growing in 2024. Here are some acquisition updates for you. First Service Corporation bought Roofing Corp of America. First Service is a major investor in property services. RCA is a large roofing operation with 16 branches in 11 states. Cornerstone Building Brands bought Eastern Architectural Systems. Cornerstone is the largest exterior materials manufacturer in North America. The company they bought specializes in impact-resistant windows and doors. Last but not least, the private equity firm Dunes Point Capital launched a new company, Roofing Services Solutions. Their first acquisition is Nolan's Roofing, which has three locations in Florida. Fines, Scams, and Jail Time we're on to fine scams and jail time. This first one is out of Louisville, Kentucky. Police are still looking for the person who stole equipment from services roofing. In time, a roofing company has had a key piece of equipment stolen and a $10,000 dump trailer parked behind a box truck was taken by brute force. Wave News reporter Mark Stevens says the whole theft was caught on camera. Yeah, services roofing's owner hopes somebody has seen this pickup truck and can alert police because the police themselves say the truck is linked to several other thefts as well. It won't take Sherlock Holmes to figure out how this theft was committed. This crew just needed this two-tone silver Dodge pickup and torque. And rammed the side of the dump trailer to push it out of the way so that it could get to the hitch assembly and, and left with it. Yep, a few pushes and it was clear to hook up. The whole episode lasted just a few minutes. Services roofing owner Dana Brown says they've reported the theft of the Bullitt County Sheriff's Office, but when they posted about it on Facebook, another police department called them. The truck itself has potentially been used in several other thefts in Shelby County as well. The truck should stand out, two-tone silver Dodge, chrome wheels in the rear, black in the front, and a hole above the left rear fender. Services is offering a cash reward. Anyone in Louisville, if you recognize this truck right here, please contact the Bullitt County Sheriff's Department. Let's make sure we get this roof or their trailer back. Our last story is out of South Dakota, and it's a wild one, everybody. Corey Cummins is the owner of Mitchell Roofing and Siding. He has been charged with three counts of felony drug possession and two misdemeanors. This is the crazy part. Corey is accused of threatening to hire a hitman to kill a woman. She apparently recorded the phone call and reported it to police. Corey was arrested after the ATF searched his home 
and roofing business last week. The warrant on those searches is sealed, but we'll keep track of any updates for you. All right, everybody, that is it for the roofing news this week. I've said it before, these are free for you, but they are not free for us to produce. Please make sure you let us know that you like this content. That means you hit the like button, give us a comment, and of course, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. We'll see you next week on The Roofing Report. Thank <laughs> you.